Hello, today I'm looking at the Katuma Sutta um, and it's translated just as <clears throat> at Katuma. So the location is a place called Katuma and it's specifically in a Maro Balan grove. Now Maro Balan is translated as a cherry plum tree, so it's a plum tree grove. So the persons involved are there's Buddha, the Venerable Sariputta, the Venerable Ananda, the Venerable Maha Magalana. Um, there's about 500 bhikkhus or monks. They also mentioned are the Sakyans of Katuma, the local folk, and also a, um, a person or maybe a spirit or whatever called Brahma Sahampati. Now he's, he's appeared before in Majmakar number 26 and um, in that particular sutta when um, Buddha first realised the truth of the way and was wondering whether to um, go into seclusion or become a teacher of the way and um, it was Brahma Sahampati that directed him or advised him to follow uh, the teaching path. So here we go. Um, so all the 500 bhikkhus had come to see Buddha at Katuma. It was a very loud and noisy gathering. So Buddha asked Ananda, who are these loud and noisy people? And Ananda explained they are 500 bhikkhus who have come to Katuma to meet with the Blessed One. The crowd is summoned to Buddha's presence who ask them why they are being so noisy. They reply that they were exchanging greetings, finding resting places, putting away their food, um, food bowls and outer garments. Buddha dismisses them, asks them to go away and not be near him. So obviously it would appear that Buddha is um, annoyed by all the noise. So the monks departed and on leaving the monks passed an assembly hall with the Sakyan clan of Katuma, the local folk, were meeting and um, inquired of the monks why they were departing. The monks state that they had been dismissed by Buddha. The Sakyan suggest that the monks remain at the assembly hall and they, the Sakyans, will go to see Buddha and see if they can restore his confidence in the monks. So the Sakyans meet with Buddha, suggest that Buddha should meet with the monks as amongst them are new followers who may change their mind if they are unable to meet with Buddha, like a young seedling that gets no water, or like a young calf who does not meet its mother or does not see its mother. Just then the Brahman Sahampati came from the Brahma world. Sorry, the Brahma Sahampati came from the Brahma world and appeared before Buddha exhorting him to meet with the, with the bhikkhus and the Blessed One's confidence was restored after Braham, Brahma Samaputta Samapati repeated the analogies uh, mentioned by the Sakyans. Um, so the, the uh, appearance of Brahma Samapati, I just wonder if it's sort of maybe could be ascribed to being perhaps Buddha's conscience because in both cases, I mean, it can't quite work out. Uh, so Buddha's initially in the um, the previous sutta, the uh, sutta MN26, is um, sort of in a, um, a bit of a dilemma whether to <clears throat> whether to um, go into seclusion or go teaching. And it's Brahma Sampati that comes forth uh, to uh, uh, advise him to um, uh, go teaching. And so in this case as well, the um, Brahma Samputa advises Buddha to um, follow the path of meeting with his monks. So anyway, so the Venerable Maha Magalana went to, went to the bhikkhus and told them to return to the presence of Buddha. Buddha then asked Venerable Sariputta, 
What was your reaction when I dismissed the book bhikkhus? I thought then that the Blessed One would be able to abide still, devote himself to pleasant abiding, and we too, the bhikkhus, would be able to do the same. Buddha tells Sariputta to stop, that such a thought should uh, never be entertained again. So it's probably confused Sariputta a bit with that response. The Buddha repeats the question to Moggallana. And what were Moggallana's thoughts when the bhikkhus were dismissed? I thought, replied Moggallana, that the Blessed One can now also abide still, devote himself to pleasant abiding, and Sariputta and I shall look after the bhikkhus. Good, good, replied Buddha. Either I shall look after the gathering of bhikkhus, or you and Sariputta shall do so. Um, so uh, I think in that, in that case then Buddha is suggesting that the senior monks should be looking after the junior monks and not just let them wander off. So now it gets to the point of the, <coughs> of, the, uh, of the meeting and the Dhamma talk given by Buddha. So it's almost like the second part of the Sutta. The Buddha spoke to the assembled bhikkhus he said, there are four kinds of fears to be expected by those who go down to the water. Fear of waves, fear of crocodiles, fear of whirlpools and fear of sharks. Now it's a sort of bit of a strange analogy, but uh, again, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe this is more like a sort of a, a memory or learning technique. So rather than having some vague abstract uh, things to remember, they put them into concrete so whenever um, these fears arise, think of waves, crocodiles, whirlpools and sharks. So Buddha continues, of the four kinds of fears for those who take up the homeless life, um, the fear of waves is a designation for anger and irritation. At the constant advice and instruction from those also in the holy life, move to and fro thus, look ahead in this way, Look away thus, flex and extend your limbs like this, wear the clothes and robes like this, carry your bowl like thus. Formerly, the clansman, uh, newly converted clansman, thinks, when we were in the home life, we advised and instructed others. Now we are in the homeless life, these bhikkhus, who are like our sons and grandsons, think they can advise and instruct us. So the bhikkhu reverts to the low life forsakes the training because he was frightened by the fear of waves. He was angry and irritated. Um, and what of the fear of crocodiles? This is the designation for gluttony. So more in full. As with the fear of waves, there is a clansman who takes up the homeless life thinking, I am a victim of discontent, a prey to discontent. Surely an end to the whole mass of suffering can be known. And in the holy life, his companions in the holy life advise him thus. You can eat this, you can't eat that. You can taste this, you can't taste that. You can drink this, you can't drink that. You must eat at the proper time. You cannot eat outside the proper time. The clansman who's taken to the holy life, that before at home, he, he thinks he could eat when he liked, taste what he liked, drank what he liked, ate and tasted and drank whenever he liked. Now, even when the faithful householder gives us good food outside the proper time, it seems that the other monks put a muzzle on our mouths. And so the man forsakes the training and reverts to the low life because he was frightened by the fear of crocodiles. Fear of crocodiles is a designation for gluttony. And what bhikkhus is a fear of whirlpools? Again, Buddha describes a clansman going into the homeless life, seeking a way of um, overcoming discontent. And one morning, this clansman, or bhikkhu, who, as he is now, is on an arms round, entering a village with his speech unguarded, his body unguarded, mindfulness unestablished, and sense faculties unrestrained. He sees some householders in the village, endowed with five cords of sense pleasure and enjoying themselves with the sense pleasures. The homeless man considers thus, in the home life we had the five cords of sense pleasure, we enjoyed ourselves, 
we had wealth. And he surmises, I can both enjoy wealth and make merit. So he forsakes the training and reverts to the low life. Buddha concludes he was frightened by the fear of whirlpools. Fear of whirlpools is a de designation for the five causes of sense pleasure. And what, because is the fear of sharks? So again, Buddha talks of the clansman dissatisfied with life, taking up homelessness to find an end to his discontent. This clansman, too, goes on an arms round, as he's now a bhikkhu or a monk, goes an arms round to a village, and he has to, uh, and he too has his speech unguarded, mindfulness unestablished, and sense faculties unrestrained. He sees a woman there, lightly clothed, lightly dressed. Lust infects his mind. Because of this lust, he forsakes the training and reverts to the low life. He was frightened by the fear of sharks. Fear of sharks is a designation for women. So, bhikkhus, there are four kinds of fears to be expected by certain persons who take up the homeless life. This is what the Blessed One said, and the bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted by the words. So that's the end of Majjhimakaya number 69. That's beg its pardon, 67. Um, now just, just to recap, so Buddha's gone over the fear of waves, fear of crocodiles, fear of whirlpools, fear of sharks, which is sort of a, a way of remembering that things to overcome are anger and irritation, gluttony, sense pleasures and lust. Thanks for watching.